<laughs> hey there, everybody. So um, today uh, I'd like to talk about a little bit about the X-Trans sensor and what a long journey it's been for me to come around and to fully appreciate the X-Trans sensor. Uh, you know, um, back in the day, uh, I started shooting 35 millimeter film, as most people did, uh, as an amateur, and started taking photographs. And, uh, you know, I learned things and figured out, you know, what lenses and stuff would do what for me, etc. And then uh, I decided to get a medium format camera, and I got a 645. Okay, well, I had to relearn stuff, because all of a sudden my 50 millimeter lens became an 80 millimeter lens and everything that goes along with that. Um, you know, so the rules changed a little bit in terms of, and, and I had to learn what I was doing in order to get a sharp photograph and a decent photograph. And then I remember I got a, six, a Pentax 6.7 camera and um, my normal lens became a 90. And uh, things, you know, just got more difficult. And I had to up my game in terms of, you know, and learn, relearn what I was doing in order to, know what I could get away with to get a decent shot. And then I went to 4x5, and the same thing happened again, where my normal lens became a 150 millimeter lens. And so, and everything that goes along with that, you know, shutter speeds and apertures and depth of field and focus, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So then, you know, 10, 15, 20 years later, we ended up going digital. And I got, um, I got the first digital camera that I really used intensively for serious work, um, for serious landscape work anyway, was the Nikon D200. Um, I had been using uh, Canon 20Ds for weddings. And uh, they worked great. And, you know, weddings aren't that demanding on image quality, honestly. And... Um, so uh, they were fine, but when I started, uh, but then I switched over to uh, Nikon and I switched over to uh, the D200 and for doing heavy landscapes. And that's when I was um, doing Portland Saturday Market and I was in the gallery, the photographic image gallery I had gallery representation. And um, I started doing uh, serious landscapes and, um, you know, every, I dialed it in and I got to the point where you know, I could get a fairly decent 16 by 20. Um, there, you know, I had to do selective um, sharpening because there were areas that weren't, you know, exactly what I was looking for in a 16 by 20. But 16 by 20 was pushing it. That, and it was a 10 megapixel camera. It was a CCD, though, which was a little bit sharper than the CMOS sensors. And so, um, uh, so then I was all excited when the Nikon D... 300 was announced and I remember I, it's one of the first camera I'd ever pre-ordered because like that was what you know it was going to be the business and I got the Nikon D300 and I, I went out and I started shooting landscapes and I was doing everything that I was doing with the Nikon D200 post-processing everything and I couldn't get a sharp image to save my life and I couldn't get a decent image to save my life I remember there was a two or three or four month period where like everything changed, everything was just awful. And I was like, wait, you know, I've been doing this for years at this point, my technique's good, what am I doing wrong? And basically what it was, was just getting used to the switch over from the D200 CCD sensor to the D300 back, you know, back to a CMOS sensor, because the Canon 20Ds had a CMOS sensor. But just learning that new sensor, I didn't know and I didn't understand that just switching sensors like that would make such a tremendous difference, okay? And why am I telling you all this? Well, I'm telling you all this because over the past 10 years, you know, the Fuji cameras and Fujifilm in general have been very alluring to me in terms of like, there's a lot of things about their cameras that I really enjoy and I really like. I like the whole retro design aspects and there's a lot of other things too. But I've always had trouble wrapping, you know, getting my, my technique around the X-Trans sensor. And it's taken a long, long time. I mean, it's taken years to adjust to the X-Trans sensor and to figure it out to the point where I have confidence in it that I can get what I want to get with a Fuji X-Trans camera. And there's, a, you know, obviously, I mean, it, if you think there's a big difference between a CCD sensor and a CMOS sensor, there's a huge difference between a bare sensor and an X-Trans sensor. 
Um, and and it it takes a it takes a while to 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 get it under control and to get confidence in it. But I will say this: once you finally figure it out, there's a reason why Fujifilm people and Fuji X Trans shooters are so fanatic about their cameras. There, you just can get results with an X Trans sensor you can't get with anything else. And and um, I, recently I've been uh, printing my uh, 2021 box set, the, some of the uh, artist proofs for it. And, um, you know, all my images so far, except for one which is a 4x5 FP4 plus negative, they're all um, X-Trans sensor images. And that's the same one, but you get the idea. Anyway, so there they are. I've been printing, I've been printing a lot. And um, the more I print from the X-Trans sensors, you know, the more impressed I am. I will say this for anyone who's having trouble with an X-Trans sensor, stop being so complicated. You know, I thought like, well, clear. Okay. For, the first thing is, uh, Adobe doesn't play nicely with X-Trans. That's on Adobe. I mean, everybody's like, so, you know, so into Adobe. And if you use Adobe, I get that. That's great. But I don't. And I, 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 you know, it, if I were shooting a bear sensor camera, I wouldn't be using Adobe, but that's me. So, um, so uh, um, Andy Mumford is where I would send you. He doesn't have a problem and he shoots Adobe. He does use Capture One for some things. So there is that. But, um, but all in all, for me, simplifying my post-processing was the key. Um, I, it's, for me, my post-processing is very simple. I take, if, you know, I, I, I analyze the JPEG images uh, so I shoot JPEG plus RAW, okay? And I try to get the JPEGs pr as close to what I want in camera as possible using all the cool film simulations, all right? And um, so I have something to, you know, to, uh, pre a, a visualization of what the photograph's going to look like. Um, and then when, if it's a photograph that I'm like, oh, yeah, I like that one, um, then I'll take it, the RAW and I'll take it into um, Fuji's RAW Converter. And I'll take it into Fuji's RAW converter, and I won't do a thing to it, but convert it from a raw, Fuji RAW file to a 16-bit TIFF, and I'll just spit it out. Just bring it in, develop it, spit it out as a 16-bit TIFF, and I'll bring that 16-bit TIFF into uh, Affinity Photo, and then I'll process from there. And the results have been fantastic. And honestly, in Affinity Photo, I don't do too much to them. Um, I adjust the levels a little bit. I adjust the brightness and contrast a little bit. Sometimes I'll adjust the U and saturation, not U, I'll adjust the saturation vibrance a little bit. I'll give it a little clarity sometimes. And by saturation, I'm talking about, you know, plus or minus 5%, nothing drastic, because the Fuji colors are there. I mean, there's no question about that. So the simpler my post processing workflow has become with an X trans file, the better it's become. The more complicated I made it, the worse they were. So that's been my experience. Now, why is the X-Trans sensor so different? Well, I think it's for every nine or 20 pixel sites compared to a bear sensor, the X-Trans sensor has two more greens, something like that. It's like 10 or 20% more green pixels. And um, so it's not just about, the pattern is not just about moire, moire or moire, however you pronounce that. It's, um, it's about, the more green pixels. I mean, 10 or 20% more green pixels is a, a big difference. And what that has to do with, in a nutshell, and this is not a scientific or engineering point of view or perspective here or, or explanation, but just a rule of thumb kind of a deal, okay? A quick understanding, if you will. Um, red light is slow. Blue light is fast, okay? Glass slows light down. The red light is not as affected by going through the glass or the silicone for that matter, hitting the silicone, being absorbed by the silicone. The red light is not, is not absorbed or slowed down as much. The red light is not slowed down as much as, or attenuated would be the proper word, as the blue light is because the blue light started out fast but got really slowed down. So. In a nutshell, that's it. So the bottom line comes down to is the red light's not as affected as the blue light is affected. Having more green pixels it, uh, helps the blue light end of the spectrum because 
uh, the green pixels kind of overlap with more with the blue pixels than they do with the red pixels. And the red pixels don't have a problem, right? Okay, it's the green, blue to green that, that have the issue of attenuation or extreme attenuation. I'm, that's a word I'm throwing in there. So by having 10, 20% more green, blue pixels, you're mitigating that attenuation effect. And that's why the Fuji colors are so spectacular. A lot of people think it's raw cooking and all this nonsense. It's the sensor. And, you know, now Fuji does know how to uh, do a JPEG. There's no question about that. Everybody raves about the Fuji JPEGs. And I agree. I mean, I, it's almost a point where, it's, and, and sometimes I don't even use the RAWs. I use the JPEGs, you know, so, but yeah. So, um, so that's my take on the X-Trans sensor. You know, I, there has been a time in my past where I was like, oh, I hate the Fuji X-Trans sensor. It drives me nuts, blah, 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 blah. That's until I started getting some serious output from it and realizing, and more importantly, realizing that, there, you know, I can't get what I'm looking for from these bare sensors. They don't look the same. They're not as good, okay? They're just harder to deal with. They don't realize my vision as easily as the Fuji sensors do. That's just me. So anyway, I wanted to throw this out there, a quick video on the Fuji X-Trans sensor and how I came to learn to love it. So, all right, everybody, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, and we'll see you out there. Bye.